everybody, I'm Scott Tabor. In this video, I wanna show you the tremolo technique. Three different ways to play it, three different ways to practice it, and three actual song examples that you can use to work on this technique yourself. So what is tremolo? Well, technically, anytime we repeat over and over the same note, we could call that tremolo. And you hear it in rock music a lot, like Eddie Van Halen does it in Eruption and other tunes. Santana does it a lot. The most famous example of tremolo on electric guitar is Dick Dale's Miser Lou, where the entire song he's doing nothing but tremolo. Of course, he's playing with a pick. This video is about a fingerstyle technique, but we could take our thumb and just go like this on the sixth string, and technically that's tremolo. We can play it that way. But when fingerstyle or classical guitarists and nylon string players talk about tremolo, we're talking specifically about a certain technique where it's not just the same note repeated over and over. We start with the thumb and then we play a couple of notes. It could be three notes, it could be four, five, or even six notes uh, with different finger configurations. But the three main ways of playing tremolo fingerstyle are number one, what we could call a triplet tremolo, number two, the classical tremolo, probably the most common, and number three, the flamenco tremolo. So look at all three of these. Okay, for the moment, just to show you these three different types of tremolo, I'm gonna have my thumb on the fourth string, and I'm gonna use the first string to play our repeated tremolo notes. So let's play our thumb on the fourth string. You can do a rest stroke like I'm doing now, or you can do a free stroke, let it float. I, li I like to do rest strokes with my thumb. Leave it there, and we're gonna do triplet tremolo by playing your middle finger on the first string and your index finger again on the first string. So it's a group of three, just like this. So you don't see this one too often, but you will see it in many, many versions of Malagueño, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. So there's that one. Now, a problem is going to arise in a minute with our thumb. We're gonna to have to navigate between all these different strings, but right now I'm just keeping it on this string just to show you these three different types of tremolo. Now the classical tremolo is your thumb, always starting with our thumb, right? Thumb, ring finger, middle finger, index. Notice that I'm doing free strokes with these fingers. I'm not doing rest strokes absolutely essential that we don't do rest strokes because we'll never get it fast and it'll be very problematic. So I'm going thumb, ring, middle, index. That is our classical tremolo. Now flamenco tremolo takes the classical tremolo and inserts the index into it just after the thumb and then goes straight into the classical thing. So this is a quintuplet. We go thumb, index, ring, middle, index. So a group of five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Tremolo is considered an advanced technique, but if you look at what I'm doing with my fingers here, I'm playing my thumb, ring, middle, index. Isn't How is that any different than going thumb, ring, middle, index on the treble strings like an arpeggio? So if you play finger style guitar, you've done this a million times. So it's really the same technique. It's arpeggio technique. We're just applying it to one string. Um, it's not as easy as playing an arpeggio, but it's the same exact motion and the same idea. We just have to transfer something we already know onto one string. So our thumb generally is gonna be our metronome. One E and a two E. In this case, I'm thinking of these as 16th notes. So one more time, triplet tremolo, P-M-I. Classical tremolo, P-A-M-I. Flamenco tremolo, P-I-A-M-I. So there's other ways to play tremolo too. Famously, Segovia supposedly played the classical tremolo, not thumb, ring, middle, index, but thumb, index, middle, index, which is pretty weird, but it kind of makes sense because we eliminate one of our weakest fingers, the ring finger, when we do that. find that pretty difficult and you normally don't see people playing it that way. They're going to go thumb, ring, middle, index. That's one of the most famous tremolo songs of all time. Okay, now let's look at three ways we can practice the tremolo technique. Like I said earlier, there's some problem with the thumb coming up and that's gonna happen right now. We normally don't see tremolo just playing the thumb on the same string over and over and over. That would be a lot easier if we did. We could just hang out on one string. What's gonna happen more often than not is your thumb's gonna be traveling from one string to the next playing arpeggios underneath the tremolo. So if I take an A minor chord like this, I'm gonna play it on the first string. My thumb will just go fifth string, fourth string, third string, and then come back again. One, two, three, four. I'm going to insert the triplet tremolo in here. So that takes some getting used to not disrupting your hand. Don't move your hand. It's so hard not to. Your thumb's got to move a lot, but the fingers need to stay hovering over that first string. Let's do the classical tremolo now with the same chord. Now 
F flamenco tremolo. The flamenco tremolo definitely has a more of a fluttery sound to it. And when you really get it going, it's almost like we're doing a rascal technique. Your fingers need to be nice and loose and just kind of fluttering. You just got to be careful not to hit other strings. This way of practicing tremolo is just us going through chords that we already know, hopefully open chords. You could play bar chords or anything that you want, and just trying to move the thumb from string to string. But your thumb will never play the string that the tremolo is happening on because it just sounds too weird. We're going to violate that in a minute just for practice in a second. So let's try a little progression. A minor, then to D minor, and E7 to A minor. Classic 1-4-5 progression in a minor key. On one chord, I'll do the triplet tremolo. Then on the next chord, I'll do the classical, and then I'll do the flamenco tremolo just so you can see the difference. Now you normally wouldn't see more than one type of tremolo played back to back like that. I'm just showing you the different ways to do tremolo. You can see how these different types of tremolo lend themselves to different tempos. So the flamenco one, we're playing so many notes, five notes per beat, it's probably going to make us have to play slower, whereas the triplet one, there's not so many notes, so we can play at a faster tempo. Okay, that's the first way to practice tremolo, just to get your feet wet. The second way is pretty weird, but a really great kickstarter to get you playing this tremolo more efficiently and fluidly sooner. So we're going to play all of our notes on one string. So like I was saying, in a song, the thumb is probably never going to play the same string that the tremolo is happening on. But just for practice, we can do it all on one string. And if we do that, listen to this. I'm getting to the string ahead of time, and I can really tell if I'm playing things evenly, where we can't sometimes when our thumb is playing these notes that ring out like this. The most common thing to do is to play your thumb and then do these three really fast and then do your thumb again and then these three really fast. And it's hard to tell sometimes because the note the thumb plays is going to sustain over the tremolo notes anyway, so it's easy to get confused there. But if we do it on one string, we can go one, two, three, four, and hear that everything is even. Put the metronome on and try to match this to every click. And again, notice that I'm getting to the string ahead of time. That is really crucial for speed and your control. If we do this with a triplet tremolo, we have thumb, middle, index. Triplet, triplet, gotta be even. And the flamenco tremolo, thumb, index, ring, middle, index. P-I-A-M-I. Usually you're going to see tremolo played on the first string, and that's a happy accident, or maybe it's by design, because we have a lot more wiggle room. Our fingers can really kind of fly, but they shouldn't fly around too much, um, on that first string, because there's no string beneath it. But try doing a tremolo on an interior string, on the next string. Very weird. It really keeps your fingers in line, because if you hit other strings, you're really going to tell that your fingers are wildly flailing everywhere. So I'm going to do that exercise that I just did on the second string a lot harder. You've got to really know where your fingers are. So you should try this on every string. Very weird. Another awesome thing you can do to kill two birds with one stone is do what we were just doing, but with a scale. So let's take a G major scale. And play, let's say, classical tremolo on one string four times per note like this. Great exercise. The third way to practice tremolo is to do it backwards. Now, I'm always talking about us lifting heavier weights so that the things we normally do seem lighter, and this is kind of one of those things. So playing in reverse is best done, I think, using the classical tremolo pattern. So instead of thumb, ring, middle, index, we'll go thumb, index, middle, ring, and you'll notice how weird that feels. There's just something unnatural about it, in my opinion, and I think most people would agree. So if you can get a little bit comfortable with this, repeating that a million times, thumb, index, middle, ring, all of a sudden when you play the normal way, it feels so much lighter and easier. You should try that. So if you know Recuerdos, you should do that entire song in reverse. I've done that and it really feels horrible. You go back and play it the normal way and all of a sudden it's magically easier. Okay, so we know three different types of tremolo and we know three different ways to practice it. Let's look at three different excerpts from actual songs where we can apply these techniques. For the triplet tremolo, we're going to play a little Malaguena. For the classical tremolo, we'll play some Stairway to Heaven. And for the flamenco tremolo, we're going to play a little piece of a Faruka from Sabicas. Now, you may already know the Malaguena theme. We have this thing. So many ways to do this. 
very often we see the index finger playing a free stroke on the first string in between all those thumb strokes I just played. Right. We're just going to insert our triplet tremolo right there on the first string. versions of Malagania where they do that exact same thing. Let's go down an octave lower and still play our tremolo on the first string. Of course, you can play any tremolo that you want on any song at any time. So if we did the classical one here on Malagania, it would sound like this. It just requires you to play faster or be able to play faster at the same tempo you were playing at on the other one. And because it's so weird traveling across strings with your thumb, what if we did Malaguena just on one string for the thumb and one string for the tremolo, of course, the entire way. Let's do that. With some tremolo. of traveling that you have to do there. That actually makes it pretty easy on the right hand, but then of course we have a little bit of a problem in the left hand. We're moving around quite a bit. Let's see what that sounds like with classical tremolo. And flamenco. See how I had to slow down a little bit? Definitely harder to play a flamenco tremolo that fast. All right, for classical tremolo, I'm assuming that you already know how to play Stairway to Heaven. Got to do a half bar, or better yet, a two-thirds bar, because we're going to end up having to bar that string anyway. We have this shape, then this guy, and a little inversion of a D major chord there, and then F major 7, and we'll just end it the same way. At the beginning of this video, I was playing the vocal melody, so here I'm just going to stick to something you may already know. Now. If you know Stairway to Heaven, we have to play the first string at the end of the arpeggio, thumb, ring, middle, index. Well, we're going to be occupied on that string doing the tremolo. So do this with your thumb. Thumb on the fourth string, then the third, then the second, and then come back to the third string. So it looks like this. faster. It really sounds beautiful when you get that going. Okay, for the final and hardest tremolo, the flamenco tremolo, let's play a piece of an E minor faruca, that's one of the flamenco forms, written by Savikas, called Consolero y Garbo. Really great faruca. Definitely going to be harder than the Malagueña and the Stairway to Heaven that we just did, but give it a shot. admittedly pretty hard, but let's check it out real quick. We're playing an E minor chord with these two fingers so that we can play these little melodies here on the top string. Now, um, one thing that we didn't see in this entire video was the fact that you can move the melody within the beat, which is pretty weird. So good practice for this would just be just keep that E minor like this and just wiggle these fingers around. I'm on the second fret, F sharp, and the third fret, G. And we're in the key of E minor here. And just kind of flutter them around in the middle of the tremolo pattern. Just getting used to kind of just like throwing your fingers into the middle of it there. And it sounds really cool when we get it down. So the beginning of that was this. My pinky there. And here I'm moving to a diminished seventh chord. And we get a lot of mileage out of these in flamenco and like Latin jazz kind of stuff. We're going to move it three frets at a time all the way up here. Um, but it actually ends up being conceptually pretty easy for that reason. Now remember the thumb, we're out of strings here with the thumb, so I go back to the next string. So I'm going like this with the thumb and just move this shape around. Three frets, three frets, and another three frets. I'm bringing my pinky up one fret, but keeping the rest of the shape. 
My pinky's guiding me down here to this. This is the way of playing an E minor chord. You can also do a bar like that. As I go to this next chord shape, I'm keeping my index and my pinky down. Slide it down here and put your ring finger here on F sharp. This is a way of playing a D major chord. This is the Andalusian cadence, these chords that are happening, if you know what that is. Right, just going here, same shape down two frets. And then one fret, I'm going back to the bar here because I'm gonna play that string. Pinky again is guiding me down to this shape. It looks like it diminished, but not quite. We're trying to get that little melody. There's another one of those things where the melody moves in the middle. Drag in my pinky down again, E minor, and the B7 chord. Really fun to do that. If you're not good at the flamenco tremolo yet, try that with the triplet or the classical tremolo. So even though tremolo is considered an advanced technique, you definitely should do it. It's a great indicator of your nail length. Like I bet your nails are too long and mine are too at the moment. And this really tells us because we're gonna end up catching on the string a lot. Another reason to do tremolo is it really forces you into the perfect hand position that if you got an old classical guitar book from the 60s or something, they would tell you to line this row of knuckles up parallel to the strings, but we don't have to be that anal about it. And that actually puts a lot of strain on your wrist if you're sitting in the flamenco way like I am. But at the same time, a lot of people are angled too much the other way. We want to have those knuckles more parallel to the strings than not. And tremolo kind of forces us to do that because we have to line these three fingers up along the same exact string. That forces you into a better hand position overall. Hey, if you like these videos, be sure to like and subscribe and check out my free right hand workshop below this video.